So what happens when you have a bad microbiome? Basically, if you have bad bacteria in the gut, what happens is you start to lose the tight junctions in the gut. And we all know we have bacteria in the gut. That bacteria leaves those tight junctions, leaves the GI system, and it stimulates our immune system. So we now know that the immunity starts in our gut. If we have a bad microbiome, we're gonna be stimulating our own immune system to attack us. And that becomes very important in dry eye because you see all the inflammatory mediators that are made uh, in our system that start attacking our meibomian glands and start attacking uh, our skin. So uh, over a decade ago, I started making this gut connection with dry eye. So I started having my patients uh, submit a stool sample. Okay, so you imagine patient comes in your office and you go, okay, you got dry eye, I want you to submit a stool sample. And they're like, oh my, well, who is this guy? <laughs> right, so, uh, so I said, look, this is the gut, and now more people are talking about it, but this, your gut is where your immunity is and you're severely inflamed, and we've gotta get this systemic inflammation down, and I wanna see if you have a, a gut problem. And lo and behold, I was submitting stool sample after stool sample, and they all had bad gut bacteria. Uh, and their good gut bacteria was very low. So from that, I said, okay, we are just going uh, to figure out how we're gonna help these patients systemically. I'm gonna help them with IPL, I'm gonna help them with drops, I'm gonna help them with doing all these things, but if I don't cure the systemic problem, uh, I'm only winning half the battle. So, if you look at all the research, you know, a lot of people, how many people here are recommending probiotics? Okay, there's no data showing that probiotics will change your gut bacteria. There's one paper on probiotics and dry eye disease, Guess what they didn't look at? Gut bacteria. So really it's looking at symptoms and all that. There's so many confounding factors, but we know if you put a probiotic supplement in an acidic gut, it's like throwing a nerd into a gang neighborhood. They're gonna get beat up and their lunch money is gonna be stolen. So it's not going to work. They're, they're wasting their money. Now, we still haven't done studies on a probiotic when you have a good gut and a not an acidic gut, so that's something to look at. And future studies on probiotics and dry eye really have to do stool samples. It's not something pleasant. We normally don't deal with that as uh, eye doctors, but we're gonna have to start doing that. So how do you change your gut bacteria? So it's not gonna be as simple as using a supplement but plant-based diet has always been, is the, one of the only things that has been shown to change your uh, gut bacteria. So I developed a two month, uh, very restrictive diet that's filled with prebiotics and probiotics. If, you, if it's not a prebiotic and probiotic, you did not make the cut. And we did those stool sample uh, exams again and we found that within two months of a very strict diet taking away all anti uh, taking away all inflammatory foods that we could change an acidic gut uh, into uh, a more normal gut so people always go okay well um, you did three years of work just tell me what I need to eat and it's not just as simple as that. I like the patients to read the book, look the two month starter diet and see why they're eating each one of these things. So if you're asking me, okay, what's the first, uh, one of the number one things I say, eat more mushrooms. And why do I say that? Because as soon as you change a patient to a plant-based diet, even though it's just for two months, they're gonna say, well, where am I gonna get my protein? And you tell them, well, the best protein that you could eat is mushrooms. It has all the essential amino acids. It has branch chain amino acids. And then there was a huge study looking at patients with allergies. That's the dry eye patient with allergies is one of the hardest patients to treat, right? 
and there was a huge study looking at allergy patients either doing antihistamines or eating mushrooms, and they found that the patients that ate mushrooms uh, had better uh, improvement in their symptoms. It's a natural mast cell uh, stabilizer. Oh, the other thing that people talk about all the time is how many people recommend to their patients the Mediterranean diet? Okay, the Mediterranean diet is an inflammatory diet. It's not, it has a lot of inflammatory foods like alcohol, which is uh, terrible for um, the dry eye patient, especially females, a large Denmark study showing that. But anytime you eat eggs, dairy, meat, and poultry, uh, that is broken down into the body into arachidonic acid, and we know arachidonic acid is a substrate for prostaglandins and inflammatory mediators. So we want a diet that's completely anti-inflammatory. The Mediterranean diet just does not cut it as a dry eye diet. So what are some sirtuin activating compounds that I recommend to, to patients? So one is blueberries. So if you have patients who have cornea neuralgia and you want something that's neuroprotective, blueberries. You want a, a sirtuin activating compound, blueberries, uh, terostilbene, right? You want um, uh, some flavonoids, you want blueberries has it. So I tell patients, some oatmeal with some blueberries is a great way to start your morning. Uh, strawberries, same thing, sirtuin uh, activating uh, compound. Uh, red grapes, resveratrol. If you're looking for one supplement for females with dry eye, uh, big studies showing resveratrol uh, was very good at improving the signs and symptoms in dry eyes in females. It's the French paradox, right? The females in France, they smoke, uh, they don't uh, eat well, they don't exercise, uh, but uh, they look healthy, they look great. Why? They have a glass of red wine. Uh, red wine has uh, resveratrol. The more the grape is stressed, the more resveratrol is made. So Pinot Noir is the best uh, red wine to drink if you're trying to get resveratrol. But you, alcohol is one of the worst things for uh, women and dry eyes. So just take a resveratrol uphill. Apples, so apples is a prebiotic. You're feeding your good bacteria. Uh, also has a quercetin, which is a sirtuin activating compound. And actually red apples, the skin of it actually uh, will stimulate a tumor suppressor uh, in your body called Mastin, which is being studied now as a way uh, to cure cancer. So supplements, so how many people here are doing IPL? So what we're trying to do is photobiomodulation with IPL, right? We're stimulating the mitochondria of the cells to work better. Uh, but one thing that may be hampering our older patients when we're doing IPL, and this is why 20 year olds uh, uh, react so quickly when you do IPL, but when you do a 70 year old, they don't react as well. Why is because the coenzymes in the mitochondria that you need are CoQ10 uh, and NAD. And what happens after the age of 40 is CoQ10 and NAD your body starts to produce less and less and less. So any older patient that I have that I'm doing IPL on, I suggest that they do CoQ10 and NAD. A lot of the medicines that these patients are on also is robbing them uh, of CoQ10. And CoQ10 is a neuroprotective, so ever since I've seen, and uh, uh, one of our daughters is a neurobiologist, one of the things the studies are showing is CoQ10 is actually neuroprotective. So I haven't actually put our uh, patients who uh, have glaucoma and our patients with corneal neuralgia on CoQ10. And this is a, another sirtuin activating uh, compound. So if you're thinking about uh, doing IPL and you have an older patient, help them out a little bit. Give them some CoQ10 and an AD so that the IPL could work better for them. So deficiencies, and we were talking about this earlier, and I said 
be careful with the fat soluble ones. Uh, if you're gonna have a patient take a fat soluble uh, vitamin or supplement, you have to know that that actually gets absorbed and held into the body. So it's not like a vitamin C, a water soluble vitamin that will get just peed away if they take too much. So if they're gonna be taking these things, uh, you have to start measuring things like vitamin D. Magnesium, if they're gonna be taking magnesium, which a lot of patients are, have a magnesium deficiency, you have to know that magnesium drives more vitamin D uh, into the body. So you have to look at all, how all these supplements uh, interact uh, with, with each other. B12 is a definite deficiency, especially as you get older. B12 is absorbed by the gut, uh, the intrinsic factor that your body makes decreases as you get older, and this is why we have so many patients who have a B12 deficiency. One of the things, if you go to a plant-based diet, you're gonna be getting less uh, B12, so I tell the patients that we're gonna go and do injections of B12. You don't wanna do an oral, again, they don't absorb it as well, especially in the older patient, so either do a sublingual or do an injection of B12. The magnesium deficiency is something that's incredible that that is increasing and this is in all populations. It might be due to uh, the soil, but a magnesium deficiency and improving a magnesium deficiency uh, will help uh, with dry eye. Uh, how many people know somebody who's on Ozempic? You know, we got about half our staff has gone from this to this uh, in our clinic. We have so many of our technicians and others who have jumped on the Ozempic trail. So the GLP-1s. So GLP-1s are uh, for diabetics. It helps with insulin. It helps with sugar regulation. But, you know, one of the main things that it does is it helps people lose weight because it decreases their appetite and it fills up. Um, makes them feel like they're full all the time just because of slow gastric uh, emptying. Things that you have to worry about GLPs is that in patients who are male, diabetic, and the first time they take a GLP, it could cause non-arthritic uh, ischemic optic neuropathy. So that's something to look, uh, look for. It does make di diabetic retinopathy worse when you first start taking uh, these GLPs. But we're finding that GLPs might be sirtuin activating compounds. Uh, they lower inflammatory mediators in the body. And we're presenting at Ascaris a small pilot study looking at patients who have started GLPs uh, and seeing if it's improved the signs and symptoms of dry eye. And we're finding uh, that it is. So maybe something in the future uh, to help our dry eye patients. So all these things are important. Uh, I would, again, encourage you to get the book. All proceeds uh, go to free care for the underserved and, um, and the financially uh, uh, stressed uh, patients. Uh, but there's a lot of good information here on wellness and it's a actually revamp of a dry eye book that I wrote in 2010. So there's more information there. If you ever want to come and see how we uh, treat and, and see these dry eye patients, we have a Saturday New York clinic that just call our office and you can set up to spend the day with us as we see dry eye patients. Thank you.